calculus. Explain simply. This curve, a simple parabola, changes direction at every point. The question is deceptively simple. What's the steepness at any single point? Look how the steepness varies. On the left, the curve plunges downward steeply. At the bottom, it's perfectly flat. On the right, it climbs upward with increasing steepness. Each point tells a different story. We know how to find slope between two points, rise over run. But what about the slope at exactly one point? Let's take a fixed point of which we have to find the slope. Take h as the distance between that fixed point and an arbitrary point on the curve. As h approaches zero, the estimation of our slope gets more and more accurate. The mathematical machinery behind this process is captured in calculus's most important formula. <clears throat> f prime of x equals limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Don't let the notation scare you. Let's see what this means using our parabola f of x equals x squared. Step one, <clears throat> f of x plus h equals x plus h, the whole thing squared, which expands to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Step two, f of x plus h minus f of x equals 2xh plus h squared. Step three, divide by h to get 2x plus h. Step four, as h approaches zero, we get 2x. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. <clears throat> now that you understand the concept, here are the shortcut rules. The power rule. If f of x equals x to the n, then f prime of x equals nx to the n minus 1. So x cubed becomes 3x squared. x of 4 becomes 4x cubed. The constant rule. The derivative of any number is zero. The derivative of five is zero. The derivative of 100 is zero. The sum rule, derivatives add up. If f of x is equal to x cubed plus two x squared e plus five, then f of prime of x is equal to three x squared e plus four x. When differentiating two functions multiplying together, use the product rule. The derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. For x squared times 3x, that's 2x times 3x plus x squared times 3, which simplifies to 6x squared plus 3x squared, giving us 9x squared. To differentiate a fraction, use the quotient rule. For x squared over x plus 1, that's 2x times x plus 1, minus x squared times 1. Simplifying to x squared plus 2x over x plus 1 squared. What's practice? What's the derivative of f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the cube plus 5x minus 7? Using our rules, f prime of x equals 12x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5. <sighs> Derivatives aren't abstract symbols. They reveal the structure of change. If f of x represents position, then f prime of x is velocity. If f of x represents velocity, then f prime of x is acceleration. In economics, if f of x is cost, then f prime of x is marginal cost. In biology, if f of x is population, then f prime of x is growth rate. Derivatives also reveal a function's behavior. Where f prime of x is positive, the function increases. Where f prime of x is negative, the function decreases. Where f prime of x equals zero, we find critical points, potential maxima and minima. This color coding shows the complete story. Red regions where the derivative is positive and the function increases. Orange where the derivative is negative and the function decreases. Now let's flip everything around. 
if I give you the derivative and ask for the original function, you're doing integration, calculus's second fundamental operation. If the derivative of some function is 2x, what was the original function? <laughs> Since we know the derivative of x squared is 2x, the original function was x squared. We write this as the integral of 2x dx equals x squared plus c. That little c is crucial. It's the constant of integration. Since the derivative of any constant is zero. Integration has a beautiful geometric meaning. It calculates the area under curves. Want to find the area under f of x equals 2x from x equals 0 to x equals 3. The traditional approach uses rectangles. More rectangles give better approximation. As rectangles get infinitely thin and infinitely numerous, we get the exact area. Integration performs this limiting process automatically. The definite integral from 0 to 3, 2x dx, gives us the exact area. We can verify this geometrically. The area forms a triangle with base 3 and height 6, so area equals a half, 23, 26 equals 9. The integration gave us the exact answer. <laughs> For integration, we have techniques like integration by parts. Integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du. and substitution methods that transform complex integrals into simpler ones. A similar method exists for fractions, called partial fractions, that breaks complex fractions into simpler parts for integration. In physics, if the displacement is s of t equals t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t, then its derivative, velocity, is v of t equals 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. The derivative of v of t gives us a of t. A company's profit function is p of x equals negative 2x squared plus 100x minus 800. When is profit maximized? To find the maximum, set p prime of x equals 0. Negative 4x plus 100 equals 0, so x equals 25. The company maximizes profit by producing 25,000 units. Calculus reveals the deep connection between instantaneous change and accumulated totals. The fundamental theorem of calculus shows these operations are inverses. Integral from a to b f prime of x dx equals f of b minus f of a. Calculus isn't just about formulas and techniques. It's about understanding the mathematical structure of change itself. Hope you benefited from the content. Hit on the like button and the subscribe button will be valued. Stay tuned for more from Robotech.